If you've been asked to enable or disable integrated components that are inside of your computer, a lot of that can be done outside of the Linux operating system. The BIOS of your computer is the basic input-output system. And that BIOS is the very first thing that runs when you power up your computer. It's running from read-only memory, so it's always there regardless of what devices or what storage media might be attached to your computer. And it doesn't matter what operating system you're running under the surface, the BIOS allows you to enable or disable those integrated components. Before you're able to make any changes into the BIOS, it first has to go through what's called a POST. That stands for Power On Self-Test. And if you've ever turned on your computer and you've seen it check for different components and maybe run through a memory test, that's exactly what's going on, is the internal test to make sure that everything is OK and that you can continue with your setup process. Your BIOS knows that ultimately you'd like an operating system loaded, so it begins looking at all of your storage devices. And as soon as it finds a master boot record or some other type of boot record, it begins launching all of the files needed to start your operating system. On our modern computers, it's a little bit of a challenge if you need to remove access to certain hardware components. Generally, everything these days is part of the motherboard. So you can't open up the system and remove USB ports, for instance. You would have to disable the motherboard completely. And of course, that's not practical. So this is where the BIOS steps in. We're able to control exactly what access the operating system might have to that hardware. If the hardware is disabled in BIOS, there's no possible way for the operating system to gain access to that particular piece of hardware. If we look at our BIOS, then you can see that you can enable and disable almost all of the components of your system. It might be USB ports, video connections, connections out serial and parallel ports. Let's look to see exactly what might be available on the BIOS version on my computer. I'm running this BIOS session in a virtual machine. So if you're running in your operating system and you'd like to load up VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion or any of those types of desktop virtualization software, you can see the same thing that I'm seeing. One thing you'll notice with the VMware is it looks like a normal startup process. It's gone through the check of all of my memory. It's found a CD-ROM, and it's found a mouse. So it's finished that power on self-test that we were talking about. Now, normally, it would launch the operating system, but I've put mine on a bit of a delay. You can see the countdown here. I've made some special configuration settings in my virtual system so that it will delay on this page and allow us these different options. You'll notice F2 enters the BIOS setup. F12 enables booting from a network device. And then you can hit Escape to get a boot menu right here in the BIOS. Depending on your piece of hardware, on your computer itself, you may have completely different buttons to press. So make sure you check the documentation for your computer or check when it starts up. If it doesn't go by too fast, you can tell exactly what buttons to press to get into the BIOS itself. In this configuration, let's press F2 to enter the setup. And here's the BIOS settings that we have for the Phoenix BIOS setup utility. One of the things that you'll see here is a set of menus across the top. You'll see time and date. And then you start to see the different components inside of the computer. And this is where we can start making changes to the integrated peripherals config. For instance, if we wanted to disable access to the built-in floppy drive, we can simply arrow down to that diskette. I can select it, and one of the options inside of it is disabled. So now I have disabled that floppy drive from being accessible from any operating system, including Linux. If we use our arrow key to go down a little bit more, we can even see the drives that are inside of the device as well. So you can limit what type of access the operating system might have to what storage devices. If we move over to the right to the advanced option, you can even go down to something like the I.O. device configuration. And that gives you access to serial ports, parallel ports, and floppy disk controllers. So this is where you might want to select to enable or disable different functions, depending on what the security requirements might be for your particular organization. This means that we don't have to worry about any Linux-specific drivers. We don't have to worry about making any Linux-specific configurations. We can simply go to the BIOS of the computer and make whatever changes we need to enable or disable access to certain pieces of the hardware.